Howdy, y'all. Not sure why I'm talking like a cowboy, but let's just roll with it. Howdy, buddy. Today is June 1st. Not only is it the first day of the first month of summer, but it is also the birthday of the one and only Link Neal. <laughs> for this birthday in particular, I wanted to do something extra special for him and make him a custom handmade gift by yours truly. For this gift, I wanted to base it around my happiest moment that I've experienced around Link. That happiest moment was definitely getting to be at Mythicon 2022. There are so many different moments during this event that brought me so much joy, which I talk in depth about in my Mythicon ramble, but there is one part in particular that I want to focus on for this project, and that is Link's reveal of his DJ persona, Elk Hound Snuggle Baby. What's there not to love about this? Visually, it is such a glamorous outfit that perfectly mixes Link's latest and greatest style with both majestic and outrageous mythicality with the white fur cloak and those giant antlers. <clears throat> On top of that, it was just so wonderful to be able to share in Link's first big DJ performance at the tail end of what was already such a positive and for me, life-changing experience. So, for the Linkster's special day, I am going to make him his very own custom-made Elk Hound Snuggle Baby doll. Here's the doll that I will be using for the base of this project. I believe that this was a soccer-themed Ken doll, and I got it off of Amazon for a little under $10. The reason I got this doll in particular is because of its face mold. Out of all of the Ken dolls I looked at, this one looked the most like Link. Plus his hairstyle is already very similar to what Link currently has, so I won't have to do too much modification on the head. I did consider swapping the body for something with a little more articulation in the joints, but since this is intended to be more of a display piece, I thought that I would save myself the trouble and keep it on the basic body. Plus, the body is already perfectly posed like he is in this picture, so there really isn't much need for modification on the body. So the first thing we need to do before we can start working on anything is to remove the head. To do this properly, I get myself a cup of hot water from my Keurig. You could also use some hot tap water from the sink. We will then dip the head of the doll into the hot water so it will soften the head. If I try to remove the doll's head without softening first, there is a chance that I could break the neck peg that is inside the doll's head, which is important for making sure the doll's head stays on the body while still maintaining its motion. I'd like to avoid having to deal with a broken neck peg in the future, so I let the head sit for about 3 minutes and then yank it off once it's nice and soft. I like to put my dolls in a plastic bag while softening, as so it doesn't get super wet and makes it easier when I have to brace the body later. Thankfully, the head removal was successful, and we have a perfectly separated doll head and a non-broken peg. Now that we've got the head taken off, I'm going to set it aside and begin on the big modifications for the body. The first thing I do is mark off with my pencil exactly where I plan to feed the structural wire into the back. The plastic on this doll is thankfully thin enough and soft enough that it can be carefully whittled away using an X-Acto knife, so that's exactly what I have done here. Once I've got those holes in place, I then take this floral wire and put it into the body as far as I can. Once I'm happy with the placement of the base of the wires, I pull them out and coat them in clear Gorilla Glue to make sure that they really hold when I start sculpting the rest of it. I also add more glue around the back where the wire is coming out to really make sure that that hold is strong. Since this glue takes a little time to cure, I am going to go ahead and get started on removing the original face paint from the head. To do this, you will need either nail polish remover, which is what I'm using, or pure acetone. Soak a cotton pad or a Q-tip in the nail polish remover, and then start wiping away the face. I found that the best technique is to first let the nail polish sit a little on the face, and then you can take a whole swath of that main layer off real quickly. 
Then it's just a matter of going back and forth and cleaning it up until all of the paint has been removed. I don't really bother dealing with the hair since that's all going to be painted over in a darker color anyway, so I just focus on getting the face nice and clean. Once you've finished removing the face, it's very important that you wash it in some warm soapy water, especially if you used acetone because the chemicals will continue to melt away at the plastic and will distort the face. Now I am going to begin working on his aviator sunglasses. I will be making him a custom pair using paper clips and I'm just going to start by unbending the paper clips and continuously lining them up with the face to make sure that everything is lining up. Then it's just a matter of bending, cutting, bending, cutting until I got the right shapes for the glasses. Once I have all the basic pieces of the glasses made, I take that same Gorilla Glue and glue it down on a clear plastic bag. Not only does this help ensure that all the wire pieces are attached together, but the plastic bag will then act as a glasses lens for the glasses. Now we're going to let those glasses clear and move back onto the body. I first go and find the middle of the wire and cut it to make sure I'm working with two equal lengths of wire on both sides. Then I just create a basic skeleton of the antlers while looking closely at a reference image. Originally the antlers were designed to look like as if they were still coming out of his head. However, when I designed it, I went for more of a wing looking design. Almost as if the antlers are like giant trees arching over him, rather than making it look like the illusion of them coming out of his head. It's really important that if you're planning on sculpting anything big like this, that you have some sort of skeleton to place your clay on. It helps you get the size and scale of your sculpture down, while also giving something for the clay to adhere to, and make sure that it is extra sturdy. I'm kind of accident prone and clumsy, so... This will make sure that if it does happen to fall over, it is less likely to break into a bazillion little pieces at my feet. And here is what the finished wiring looks like. I'm pretty happy with the shape that I got there. I'm not always the best at symmetry, but they look like antlers, so we're good. Now I'm just going to go and cut out the glasses, making sure not to cut out the center frames, but everything else around it. With those cut out, we can now place them on the head and begin shaping the sides of them to make sure that they properly fit on his head. I really want to make sure that these can be removable, just in case Link wants to peek at the face sculpt underneath. So making sure you're carefully bending and testing the wires so they can fit is important. Here is the basic frames done. This is how they look on the head and here's how they look off of the head. Now it's time to move on to sculpting. I will be using a two-part epoxy sculpt for this project. I like to use epoxy sculpt for dolls because it really adheres well to plastic and it is also pretty lightweight while also being industrial hold. For this you take two equal parts of A and B and then mix them together in your hand. And then you can just take that mixture and put it on your sculpture. It's kind of like air dry clay as once you put it on there you just leave it out in the air to cure but it feels a little bit more like a putty. The first thing I do is I just smush in that clay, getting the basic shape that I want, and then I'm taking my rubber tip tool and adding the details of the hair lines, really making sure to blend it in with the original sculpt and continuing it onward to make it look as natural as possible. I'm not the most talented sculptor, but I do pretty decently with a reference, and since the hair already has the lines there, it's a lot easier for me to sort of follow along and replicate the same shapes. If I wanted to, I really probably could have gotten away with just painting the doll's original hair, but you know Link, you know his hair, and I had to do something that was a little bit more of a statement piece, you know? So I give it a little bit more height, 
give it a little bit more size. And then of course later I'm going to give it a beautiful little salt and pepper paint job. And just before finishing the sculpt, I pop the glasses on real quick to make sure that the new sculpt doesn't interfere with putting the glasses on at all. And here's his hair finished. It looks a little messy right now, but it looks a lot better once there's paint on there, trust me. Now it's time to do the sculpting for the antlers. I decided to do this in two sessions, the first session doing just that one middle antler going straight from the base of the back all the way up to the tip, and then letting that cure completely overnight and returning it to do the other parts of the antlers. I first go in just making sure I am filling in all the gaps of the wiring and getting the basic shape on, and then once the clay is hardened a little bit more, I go in and try to flatten and smooth out some of those rougher details. They still came out a little lumpy and you can see a little creases and things here and there, but for my sculpting ability, I think they look pretty dang good. And since I had some extra epoxy, I decided to throw that on the bottom of the doll stand since I noticed that when I put the doll back on there after sculpting, it was a little weighed down, so I wanted to make sure there was enough weight on the doll stand to really support the doll. So I just slap that on, smooth it up, and then boom, we got a weighted doll stand. Now with the clay fully cured, I'm going to start painting Link's hair. I mix up a dark gray, almost slate color for his hair, and I just go in painting the base color for that hair. I start by going carefully around the hairline to make sure I'm filling it in while also avoiding his face as much as possible. It took me two coats of this color to get it nice and opaque. And honestly, I am loving how the hair looks now that it's all one color. Now, I can't sew, so I'm not going to make my guy a new pair of pants for this. However, I can modify to the best of my ability the pants that came with the doll. To do this, I am just going to add multiple, multiple layers of white until it is as opaque as I can get. And then later, I'm going to make more of a cream color to go on top to match the pants that he had more closely. I'm not going to show all the steps of me painting the pants because that would be way too repetitive, but just note that it took me lots and lots and lots and lots of coats of paint to get this even close to opaque. Since he is a DJ, it only seems appropriate to give him a little pair of headphones. Similar to the pants, I give those many, many, many layers of white paint, which again, I'm not going to show all those stages because it took way too many to get them opaque. For his shoes, I grabbed this white pair of tennis shoes that came from a fashionista Ken doll that I already had put aside for another project. Wink, wink. Stylistically and color-wise, these shoes are very close to the ones he actually had, although they are missing the red stripe on them. So with my pencil, I just go ahead and on both shoes make an outline that I will paint in with red later. To make it easier to paint all around the shoe and to prevent risk of chipping the paint while doing it, I stick them onto the ends of these markers and then carefully begin painting in the red. This took me about three to four coats to get a nice solid red color. And because I'm a sucker for details, I am going to take this metallic silver and color in the details of the little metal parts on the shoes, you know, where the shoelaces go through. I'm always impressed with the sculpting on the accessories of doll clothes, but so disappointed on the lack of paint on them, so I decide to bring out the details as best as I can and paint on the little silver parts. And that's about it for the shoes. I'm going to go and set those aside and then later I will put a coat of sealant on them to make sure they don't break. Now I'm going to take my little pair of glasses and paint all of the wire with a metallic bronze. I could have gone with just like a burnt orange or a brown, but this is El Count Snuggle Baby. He needs a little sparkle and a little glam, so we're going with the shiny bronze on those glasses. I could call the glasses done here, but I wanted to try something a little ambitious and tint the lenses of the glasses like he had. So I'm going to just take this basic marker and color on top of the plastic of the glasses. And 
Next, I'm gonna take this Liquitex high gloss varnish and put it over the lenses to seal in the marker and give them a nice little shine. And just in case Link decides to take the glasses on and off, I'm gonna coat all that paint with Mod Podge to really seal it in and prevent it from chipping. And now the glasses are completed. With the glasses done, I'm going to move back to Link's hair and dry brush on some white streaks. If you don't know, the dry brushing is a technique where you wipe the majority of the paint off of your paintbrush and then just lightly brush over your sculpted piece. This will allow the paint to go on the topmost layers of your sculpture while still letting the dark part of the paint underneath shine through. I was at first worried that I went a little too hard on the white, but once you add the white of the rest of the costume, it looks pretty well balanced. And honestly, I'm really happy with how the hair came out. I think that's my favorite part. Now to seal in the work on the hair and get the face ready for a face up, I'm going to use this Mr. Super Clear sealant spray on the face. It is important to use this outside in a well ventilated area and you should definitely be wearing a mask when using this. And now he is ready to get a face. First thing I do is I take a brown watercolor pencil and sketch out the basic shapes of his face, mainly his eyebrows and his eyes. I of course had a reference of Link's face next to me, but I feel like at this point in my life I should really know what his face looks like. I mean, I've been watching him for 10 years, like, if I don't know what Link's face looks like, I am a sham. I also decide to take a little bit of white watercolor pencil and just add the finest little lines in the hair just to add a couple more detailed streaks. Here's what the basic outline's looking like. I'm pretty happy with how the outline came out, so I go and add another layer of sealant to seal in the work and continue working on the face. I switch over to paint since I'm a little more confident in my painting ability than using watercolor pencils, and I start by only pulling in the whites of his eyes. It's the best way for me to really finalize the shape of his eyes before going all crazy with the rest of his details and messing it up. Once I'm happy with the whites of his eyes, I then take a light gray color again and I start making the shape of his eyebrows. Here's how he's looking so far. Honestly? I'm really happy with how this is going. I've done a few doll face-ups in the past, but I've never really been too happy with them, but so far I'm really happy with how this is going. I'm now going to quickly sand the base of my doll stand along with the antlers to get those ready for painting as well. I really want to make sure that the doll stand is as flat and smooth as possible, so that way when you set it on a flat surface, it has no worrying of rocking and falling over. It was really hard to sand down the antlers, so they're not as smooth and cleaned as I'd like them to be, but, you know, it's better to try than not try at all. Once those are all sanded down, I then take out the head, the body, and the shoes to get a nice load of sealant. That way the body can be ready to be painted on, and I'm also saving the work on the face and the shoes. Alright, see you boys in 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, the body is ready to be worked on. The first thing I'm going to do is make the outline for his white tank top that will be underneath his fur cloak. Since I don't plan on the cloak being removable, I didn't think it was necessary to make a removable shirt, so I'm just going to paint right on his chest a white shirt. That way, when you do peek under the cloak, it's not just, you know, naked chest under there. Because, I don't know, that just seemed a little weird and not so accurate to the source material. Once I'm happy with the basic outline, I go back to my handy dandy white paint and then just paint in the lines to give him a nice white tank top. This took me about four coats to get a nice solid opaque white color. In between the layers of Link's tank top drawing, I also decide to paint the base of the doll stand white to match the rest of it. Also, when I finally finish building up the white on the headphones, I add a pearl metallic white to the outer parts of the headphones, painting everything except 
the ear pads on the inside. That way there's a little differentiating in texture and again they will stand out more with all the white going on with the ensemble. Returning back to Link's head, it is time to paint on the irises. Initially I was going to try and use the colored pencil to do it, although it kind of started chipping away at some of the white paint underneath, so instead I went back to my fine tipped brush and paints. Not too shabby if I say so myself. With all those basic shapes in, I'm just finalizing all of the details, going back and forth between using both paints and the watercolor pencils. I found it much easier to work with the watercolor pencils when you've wet the tips of them, so I did that in combination with using the acrylic paints. I continue filling in all the details of the eyes like the pupils and the little eye shines to show a little life in them, as well as building up different layers of color in the eyebrows and then adding a color for the lips. Surprisingly, the hardest part for me was getting the right lip color for him. So as you can see on this first pass through when I thought it was all finished, the lips look very, very bright. I leave everything else as is, but I do go back later and get a more neutral color for the lips. Until then, it is time to start painting the antlers. Now I am going to go and add a nice base coat of white to the antlers to get them prepped for the rest of the paint job. It only took me two coats to get a nice solid white. Before continuing on with the rest of the paint job, I add a layer of Mod Podge to Link's tank top to really seal in that work and make sure it doesn't chip off. I also go ahead and put Mod Podge on the doll stand to make sure the paint I added doesn't chip off once the doll's on it. With the Mod Podge dried, it's time to add some custom details to the doll stand. I start by writing out in Sharpie Link's birth date for this year along with this B Ev as my signature. My actual signature that I like use for writing checks and stuff, I don't really love and it also includes my dead name. So. Until I figure out what I really want my professional signature to be, I'm just going to use the modified version of my This Be Ev logo. With the Sharpie outline done, I'm now going to go back over the numbers in black paint to fix any mistakes and make sure it's a nice permanent hold, and then go over the This Be Ev in a bright poppin' red. Here's where I realized the color I was missing while mixing Link's lips was brown. I was using a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and white, but once I added the brown in, it really helped neutralize the colors and make it look a lot more like a natural look. And I'm so glad I ended up going back and doing that. And with that adjustment, we can call Link's face up finished. I'm honestly surprised that nothing has gone horrendously wrong yet while making this doll. Wow! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Uh, I just had to say something, didn't I? Thank goodness I had the brains to put down some plastic on my table this time. Either way, it was still not fun to clean up, but at least I don't have to worry about having a glue-covered table. Also, what the heck am I doing right here? Trying to scoop it up with Kleenexes? Like, what is this, amateur hour? I did end up grabbing some paper towels and cleaning it up, but man was I frustrated with dealing with this. Anywho, now that that mess is dealt with, I take that Mod Podge and I put a little bit over Link's lips to seal them in and then give them the faintest little shine. I also go back over the doll base to seal in the new additions I've made. And while it's still out, I also slap Mod Podge onto those headphones that I've made because I can definitely see these falling off his neck and clattering on the floor, and I don't want that dark black plastic underneath to be shining through anytime soon. So seal it up! Remember those shorts from earlier? Well, here's how they're looking after several layers when I put them on the body. After a while, I decided it made more sense to finish up the paint job while they're on the body, since I don't really plan on these pants being removable. Before continuing with the pants though, I decided to make Link's socks. At first I thought, oh maybe I'll do some sculpted details on the plastic to really make it look like he's got three dimensional socks, but you know, I just wasn't feeling like sculpting more and it's actually a lot harder to sculpt on that smooth body plastic than you think. 
it just doesn't adhere that well so i thought you know layers of white paint and a slap coat of mod podge they look like socks and that's all that matters so that's what i'm doing starting with the right foot and then once that's all painted and mod podged and dried up i move over to the other foot sock boy boy up in the socks he's wearing socks and here are the finished socks i think these turned out super cute and I think Elkhound Snuggle Baby liked them as well because he's doing a little sock jig. Look at him go. To make sure that these pants never come off of his body, I'm going to hot glue underneath the waistband so those are really snug on there. Of course, while doing this, you could say, oh, you could have sculpted the pants on if they're just not going to be removable anyway. But I like the fact that the legs still have a little bit of mobility, and if I had sculpted it, I would lose some of that mobility in the hip joints. And also, I'm not that confident in my sculpting ability, so gluing on janky paint pants it is. With those glued on, I'm just going to now take in the white paint and continue filling in the parts that chipped off, as well as covering in the parts of the glue that are peeking through the waistband. Once I'm happy with the white base coat on those shorts, I then layer everything in Mod Podge to seal it in and to help prevent it from cracking when the legs move a little bit. Once that protective layer of Mod Podge is dried, I'm now going to go back over the pants with more of a cream color. When I look at the pictures of El Count Snuggle Baby, to me the pants look a little more cream than white, so that's what I'm going to do. Plus, I think having this slight color alternation will help, you know, add a little warmth into this very, very white looking ensemble. I did add another layer of Mod Podge on top of that cream color paint, but I did unfortunately lose the footage to that. But just know that there is another layer of Mod Podge sealing in the paint to help prevent it from cracking all over. Now it is time to paint those big gorgeous antlers. I mix up a nice light tan color and just put that all over the antlers. Because of that nice white base coat, I only needed to do one layer of the tan to get it nice and opaque. To give the antlers a little more detail and life, I'm now going to dry brush a darker tannish brown color on top of it. I start at the tips of the antlers to give them a lot more dark color at the points and then fade it out and do more of a lighter dry brushing over the rest of the antlers just to make it look like it's got a little more detail going on. Doing this does in fact bring out more details of the sculpt, but personally I think that some of the lines that I have going on that I unintentionally made in the sculpt kind of make it look a bit more like organic antlers, so I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Here is the finished paint job on the antlers. And of course, we're going to give the antlers a nice thorough coating of Mod Podge. Just in case this thing falls over and the antlers hit something, I want to make sure that the paint has its best chance of surviving and not chipping. One detail I forgot to add to Link's face was some gloss to his eyes. So I'm going to go back with that Liquitex high gloss varnish and just add it over his eyes. I think this detail makes realistic dolls more realistic and brings a little more life to the doll, especially when you're doing photography. Now I'm going to take these two different metallic gold paints, mix them together, and I'm going to very carefully paint on Link's wedding ring. I also go and paint on the black ring that he has on his other hand. Like I've said before, I am a sucker for details. so. I think it's really fun to go in with these little personalized details of his. Something that he can look at and be like, oh look at that, I got my thing there. And here's a close up of the painted rings. Now I decided to get really ambitious and really test my skills and carefully add on Link's elven tattoo. I also considered doing his jade tattoo in addition with this one, but I honestly did not think I had the capability of recreating it on such a small surface. Plus, it really isn't necessary because at the time of the reveal of Elkhound Snuggle Baby, he did not have this tattoo yet, so 
I have an excuse not to do it. With a reference nearby, I carefully start out using a pencil to draw out the sketch of it. My first pass through, I was actually not happy with the placement, so I had to erase everything and then redraw it in a different placement. I was definitely a lot happier with the second pass through, and I was actually really proud of myself for how it came out, considering I was doing very thin, fine lines on a very small surface. And now to bring out the definition of the tattoo, we go back in with the paint. This was definitely the most tense part of making this project. I did not want to mess up the paint job, and even though this is a fine-tipped paintbrush, it wasn't as fine as I would like it, so I took my time very carefully doing little bits at a time to make sure that I didn't bulk up the lines too much and making it still recognizable as Link's tattoo. After a very deep exhale of air, here is the finished tattoo. Now it's time to add those fun details to the antlers. I'm going to start by taking this hemp cord and gluing it to the base of the antler and then wrapping it all around to simulate the rope on his antlers. A little on the bulky side, but still not bad. And of course, we gotta add some glimmery, glamoury details. So I'm gonna hot glue some of these acrylic gems onto the base parts of where the rope stops. You don't wanna overdo it with the shimmery, sparkly, glamouries, but it's just like a little peekaboo, like, hello, I am fabulous, nice to meet you. I definitely burnt my fingertips a couple times there, but I am definitely happy with the placement of those gems. Only one last detail to make, and that's his fabulous fur cloak. Now, I know nothing about sewing and making clothes or anything like that, so I'm gonna do this in a very janky, figure it out kind of way. To make sure I don't, you know, waste all the fabric I have for the cloak, I'm gonna take this old dish rag, cut a hole in it, and then drape it over the body, and then just start cutting, tracing, and manipulating it until I get a decent shape that I want to use for the final outcome. Once I get a shape that I'm pretty happy with, I take down that pattern I made and trace it onto my fabric. I'm using a white tank top that I no longer use, and I'm just gonna carefully trace down the lines of this pattern. Once it's all cut out, I place it back on my doll to make sure I am happy with the fit. And so far, it's not looking too bad. Hopefully nothing horrendous will happen to slow down my progress. Now, my idea was to take these white feathers and to glue them onto the fabric as to simulate fur. As you can see, I took the time to trim down the feathers, cutting off the more feather-looking parts and only keeping the fluffy parts. And then I am taking those cutoff parts and then I glue them all over this white piece of fabric. I start by going around the perimeter and then my intention was once the perimeter is filled in, then I can just go back over into the middle, layering the feathers to simulate fur. Now, in my head, this was a good idea. However, there are two major problems with this that I did not realize until I had already finished the perimeter. First problem being that feathers usually have this part in the middle that is very stiff and, you know, doesn't bend well. So turning that into a drapey fabric material wasn't really going to work. And two, the fact that I was applying it with hot glue. Hot glue on a fabric is immediately going to stiffen that edge and not let it flow and drape at all. There's a chance that this could have worked if I completely cut the feathers off of the... Uh, I don't know if that's a bone or whatever that part of the feather is called, but if I cut it out from that part and then used maybe a fabric glue, there's a chance it might have worked. But unfortunately, going through all this effort, cutting, trimming, making all this mess was for naught. As you can see, once I place it on, it is not 
looking well. I tried bending it, I tried contorting it to try and force it to cooperate, but unfortunately, once it was on the mannequin, I realized that I was going to have to scrap this whole thing. Sometimes you gotta go through a lot of chaos and go through all this mess only to realize it's not gonna work. But that's okay. Everything's still coming along, but I got a feathery mess to clean up, unfortunately. One emergency shopping trip to Michael's later, I picked up this lovely little piece of white faux fur, and I actually bought two of them just in case I did an oopsie and messed up on my first try. I lay it fur side down and then take my old pattern from before and again draw it on top of the fur. To make sure that I don't cut any of the fur fibers on the front of this piece of fabric, I'm going to take this X-Acto knife and carefully cut out the pattern. I do intend to trim the fur later, but I want to make sure that it is even and consistent, so cutting it out this way is definitely the way to go with any kind of fur. Once I drape it over the doll, I am definitely so happy that I decided to get the fur. Once I have the fur placed in the position I like, I'm going to put a safety pin through it to hold it in place, and then with a spare doll hairbrush, I'm going to comb out the fur so it is all facing the right direction. Once it's all brushed out, I'm then going to take a pair of scissors and trim out the fibers of the fur, just to make it look a little cleaner and a little less chaotic. Now I'm going to remove the safety pin and begin gluing the cloak to the doll. It would have been cool if I could make the cloak removable, but I just didn't really know how to do that. And since, again, this is more of a display piece, I thought it didn't really matter too much to do that. Once it's glued to the doll itself, I also cut and re-glue the cloak to itself. That way I can contort the shape a little to make it hug a little closer to the body. Once I'm fully satisfied with the finished shape of the cloak, I just give it one final brushing to look its best. And here is the finished cloak. All right, all the pieces of this doll are now complete. All that's left is to assemble them together. While putting on the shoes, the paint on the back of the heels did unfortunately scrape off, so I'm just going to do some finishing touches by repainting in those lines, and then to really make sure that that paint does not come off again, I'm going to coat the shoes in a layer of Mod Podge. And with those last touches, l Count Snuggle Baby is complete. So, l Count Snuggle Baby, that's, that's my DJ name, this is me. This is kind of a business, but I could go in full persona, and I guess as a DJ, you know what? Let's meet halfway. Just call me L Town. It's not good. You know? And I know that we'll be on the same page. Says something about our relationship. Like, there's that. I just don't think anybody off the street will be comfortable looking me in the eyes and calling me Elk House Snuggle Baby. It's just such a. 
it's this thing that normal people wouldn't do. Like if somebody asked me to do that, look them in the eye and you tell them, elk count snuggling, I would be like, uh, I'm gonna order coffee from somewhere else, you know? <laughs> questioning my entire life right now. You like that surprise little music video I did there? I felt like the reveal of El Count Snuggle Baby deserved something a little more custom for him, so I just whipped that together with a little dubstep royalty free track. So hope you like that little showing off of my final creation. Of course, I got the guy right here with me, so you know it's real. And I am just, I couldn't be happier with how this guy turned out. Um, you know, because I haven't done a lot of dog customizations. And there's probably only one other one that for a while I was actually proud of. Here, I'll bring it up for you guys. Give me a sec. Going to get it. I got all these boxes in the way because I'm getting ready to ship the old boy. So I'm walking around with the, okay. This is one of the first dog customs that I did many years ago, probably back in, I wanna say between 20, not 2016, no, probably 2018. Um, and I only did the eyes and a little blushing on it. And, come on, focus. Um, this was like the first one I was really ever proud of. Um, I have a couple of other ones that I have stored away um, somewhere getting forgotten the time that you know I'm not wasn't too proud of but again I was just learning and I'm I couldn't be happier with how this guy turned out I was most apprehensive with his face but I think I did really good you know you can definitely tell it's hand painted and all that stuff and it's not perfectly symmetrical but for me that's really good work and I hope Link thinks it's good work too, or at least just likes it, because, you know, put a lot of work getting all the little details in, gave him a little sign on the bottom, and yeah, I'm just really happy with how this came out, because this was, you know, pretty ambitious for me, you know, going from being an amateur doll face person in my free time to... Okay, now we're going to really step it up and make a present for the Linkster. So, I was nervous, but I think all my efforts really paid off. And I hope Link likes El Count Snuggle Baby. So, I'm going to try and get him packed up nicely. So, he can be shipped off. And hopefully by the time this video on your birthday, Link is coming out. Around the same time, hopefully you got that little present for me. I don't know what's going to come out first, but... Either way, I really hope, Link, that you enjoy the little gift I made for you, whether you physically have it yet or you're just seeing this or whatever, because I felt like, you know, I really wanted to show my appreciation for you this year, because it's been a tough year for me, but so much of me has changed still for the better, and a lot of that would not have happened without your, I guess, indirect or direct influence, and... I'm just so grateful to, you know, have you in my life, to be able to wake up every day and see your smile and have you make me laugh. And it was great to be able to, you know, interact with you a little bit at Mythicon and share my story. And, you know, I'm just so proud of who I am. And all, none of this would be possible without you. I would not have come out. I would not have you know, made the step to actually start transitioning. So thank you, Link, for that influence. And again, I'm also really proud of you for, you know, the person you've become watching you blossom and grow throughout the years on the channel and on Ear Biscuits. And I'm just happy to see what the future holds for you and for me. And I just wanted to send a little thank you. So hopefully Count Snuggle Baby Jr. here gets to you safely and 
you know, I hope I hope you like it because I just wanted to do something for you. And Brett, don't you worry. I got something really ambitious planned for your birthday. So hopefully I can get that made to you as well because I really want you to, you know, you're just as important to me as Link. And, you know, you you both have been an amazing part of my life. And I just wanted to do something special for you guys this year. I've never, ever sent fan mail, never honestly really thought to do it. But today, this year, I just thought, hey, you know what? You guys deserve something real nice. And one of the best ways that I feel like I show my love and appreciation for people is making gifts. I also just love gift giving in general. But the idea of making something handmade, you know, using my talents and passions to make someone happy, that's that's like what I love. Like if I can make a career off of doing that, I would. I just haven't figured it out yet, but I just wanted to make something to show, you know, how much I love you guys, how much I appreciate you guys. And, you know, just something physical that you can look at and enjoy and hopefully give you a little boost of positivity. But with that, we have reached the end of the video, the end of making Elk Count Snuggle Baby. And all that's left is for me to ship him off to the Mythical Boys. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this making video. I love making stuff. And trust me, I know around um, September is when I'm going to start making the thing for Rhett. So around Rhett's birthday in October, you can hopefully expect another gift for him. And yeah, I've got other things planned up. Um, I just got off of being sick. So um, once I'm fully recovered with my voice, I'm going to get back into doing um, cover songs and stuff. So you can expect more of that. Um, but if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe so you can keep watching what I'm doing and to know that, you know, you like what you're seeing. And of course, leave a like if you want to see more craft videos like this. And of course, hit the bell if you want to be notified when my next videos are up. I don't have a consistent schedule, but if you want to know, you know, a little more what my, what's going on with me, what my plans are, definitely suggest follow me on Twitter. I am the most active on there and I keep up to date on what my plans are for videos. And I also have a uh, TikTok where I post little content things here and there. I also technically have an Instagram. I'm not really active on there, but occasionally I'll post little picture things. So you can follow me on there too. This be Ev should be everything there. But that's it for this one, guys. Me and El Count Snuggle Baby are going to sign out and I will see you in the next video. Later, guys.